Okay, guys, good morning. <clears throat> what we want to be doing in, in, in this video is basically finishing the class that we started last, last week in terms of the vector uh, autoregressive processes. So it's a multivariate model. So remember, just as a review, that we have a, a var, and a var always has something like bivariate, for example. So this implies that we have two y's. And var p implies how many lags I'm using. That's all. Got it? So in, in the example that follows, what we're going to be developing is a, a var one, a bivariate var one. Oh, sorry, let's do two lags. Okay. And so this implies that I have two variables. I have y1t and y2t. Okay. And I will write this already in a reduced form or matrix form. So this is going to be alpha one zero, alpha two zero. And as soon as I have two back, two lags, I need to do, let's call this beta one one, beta one two, beta two one, beta two two, that multiplies y one t minus one and y two t minus one. All right, so this is the first lag. And our second lag is going to be gamma one one, gamma one two, gamma two one, gamma two two, that multiplies the same variables two lags. Okay, plus our errors. So this is the the bivariate model that we're going to be we're going to be working with now, guys. And for that, let me show you. Let's see, da, 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 da. let's see, e-views. What is my e-views here? Mm. Okay, so we have here the, the e-views. I just need to be sure that I'm showing the e-views. Perfect. Uh, this views you have the views that the name is uh, PR2007. So as I was mentioning in the other class, we have data, Australian data, the AOS, and we have the Dow Jones Industrials. We have shown last class that these two are non-stationary. So, and I show you also that just taking the logs, what, what we do with the logs is we reduce the magnitude. So this is good for heteroscedasticity, but we don't solve the issue of a uh, stationarity, okay? So what we need to do then is we need to take the log difference. And so this is what we call d laus and DLDGI. So basically if you take a look, so let me change first my, my sample to all. So it's a robot all. If we take a look to d laus and DLDGI, let's open them as a group. Let's take a look to the graph. So now we can see that we have an stationary series. Okay. As I showed you also last class, what we can do is a, a, a formal test for, uh, for stationarity of the data. What we can do is, okay, so let me open this one here. Let's have the spreadsheet. So, and then we go, once we have the data, so I'm going to test if my series DL allows is a stationary one. So this is the, the, the returns, the return series, the log, or log return series. So we do view, unit root. Now let's do a standard unit root test. This is my augmented DK filler. And let's do first in levels. And let's do 15, it's okay. We have daily data, I think. Yes, we have daily data for a year. So let's click the data. Let's click the, the, the result. And this is the way that you, that you read this one here. My critical values, guys, are minus, let's assume 5% is minus 2.87. Uh, anything that is to the left of, the, of this critical value implies a rejection of the null hypothesis. My null hypothesis, guys, is that I have a unit root. Okay, so that, that psi in my AR process of psi equals one. So this is my null hypothesis. So basically at the 5% significance level also, we are rejecting a null hypothesis. So this implies technically that um, the D log of AOS is a, a stationary process. So we can work with this one here. If you do the, the same with, uh, with the log differences of the DGI, so let's do the same view, 
unit truth standard, 15 lakhs, you can see the same. So the critical value is minus 2.87, minus 15 is to the left. So we are in a rejection zone. And also by the, the probability being a smaller, or this is my p-value, being a smaller than 0 0.05 implies that we are rejecting the null hypothesis and my null hypothesis that, that we have a unit truth. So now that we have two series that have a, that, that are stationary, because remember, that's the main condition here. We need to have a stationary series. Then we can start proceeding with a, with a bar model. OK? So the, the, as I was mentioning before, is how do we test? So how do we determine P? No? And I, as I mentioned also, guys, what we use is basically we have some criteria that we call information criteria. So basically, selected P. So the number of lags is simply using the information criteria. So we can use the, the multivariate Akaike. We can use the multivariate variation information criteria, or we can use the, uh, the multivariate uh, Hanakui. Okay, so we're going to use these ones and in order to select. I will do one example, and then I will let you do this at home. So how do we create a bar one model in, in eViews? Uh, the process is very simple. You just go quick. You go uh, estimate equation. Then you go, you select here in the method. Uh, you select where is my, my bar. Yeah, cointegration, uh, arma. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so the, the way of, of estimating this one here is not by estimate equation, it's estimate bar. So you have down, estimate bar. Okay, let's click estimate bar. So we do a standard bar. My endogenous variables are going to be, uh, as usual, the same ones. So we're going to have a LD, and what's this one? This one here. The name is, I need to be sure that is that D log LD. Sorry, it's not LD, it's DL, D log. This one here, this is the first one. Then we have uh, D L, yeah, D Laos. Oh, let's go again to estimate D Laos. Okay, and, and this is the way, guys, in which we we basically, we set up the exogenous to be C, only the constant. This one, one implies that I have one lag in each of the, of the variables. I have a bivariate model. So this is basically a, a var one, okay? So if you click here, this is what you get. So remember that at this stage, our interest is simply to observe, to select the, the, the model. It's a, it's a var one, it's a var two, et cetera. So if you do the same, if you do a, a bar two, for example, is the same, D, L, D, G, I, D, Laos, now two lags, okay, the, the, the second lag. So we have one lag, two lags, and my exogenous is the same. You simply run this model here, and then you're going to do this as many times as you prefer, but normally if we have daily data, five, five lags is more than enough, but I will do only two. So what do we do with these results? Okay, the only thing that we do at this point is to compare my likely, my archaic information criteria, for example. So you can see here that the archaic for a bar one is minus 14.21127. And here my archaic is minus 14.21467. So this one here is a smaller. So based on the archaic criterion, guys, I, I would prefer the bar two. Now, if you take now to the, to the Schwartz or the Bayesian information criteria, the, the decision is the reverse. Minus 14.12 is larger than minus 14.07. 14 so according to the, the variation, you should be selecting this model here, okay? So normally what we do is we use both as soon as we have only two competing models. Uh, and then we, we see the forecasting abilities and, uh, and the impulse response abilities that these models have, okay? But for now, 
And of course, guys, what you need to do is you need to do part three, you need to do part four, just check. And I've done this before, so I know that the part two, I think, is a, is a preferred model. Now, always remember that when we do this type of multivariate models, one criteria that is very important to, to have in mind is parsimony. So we want the, the lowest number of lags because you know that a, according to the number of lags and according to the number of variables that we include in our system, the degrees of freedom can, be, can disappear very quickly. Right, because the degrees of freedom is n minus k, and remember k is the number of parameters. So, and the number of parameters is, as I mentioned in the previous class, is g plus g squared times number of lags. So it can really grow really fast. Okay. Okay. So let's let's start using my my part two. So, and and before using the yes, let's start thinking about the part two as as my way of solving the model. So we're going to do forecast with this stuff. We're going to do something more that is called the impulse responses, okay? But before going to impulse responses, there is something more that you need to know. So what I've done in this model here, if you go to estimate, the first variable that I included is DL, DGI, and DLAUS, okay? Uh, the order in, in this case matters, guys. And normally what we try to put as a first variable is the one that has an influence on the second variable, okay? Now, if we have, if both of them influence each other, so what we do normally is we run two models, one with a, the first variable, and the second one, and then the second one first, and the and the second and the first one second. So we try to run this if this multi kind of multi causality. Okay. So what? Let's analyze then. How do how do we have an idea? How do we know that something is causing something? Okay. Let's create another series. I think I have I have created already this to this group. It's simply the the group members are DLAUS and DLDGI. So my two variables of interest. Uh, let me see, where's my spreadsheet? Okay, and, and what we are going to do now is run a, once you have the group, you go view and Granger causality. Yeah, in number of lags, let's include 10, for example. Okay, 10 days, or we can even put 20 days, just kind of a one month. And just run this one here. And here appears a table that is really interesting. So this table simply implies who causes who, you know? Uh, in this case, the, the null hypothesis is the following, that DG, the DLDGI does not Granger cause DL Laos. Okay, so this is a probability of zero. So at a 5%, we are going to reject this null hypothesis. What we are rejecting basically is that DLD DLDGI does not Granger cause implies that indeed DLDGI causes, in, in the Granger sense, I will explain you what is in the Granger sense, causes DLAUS. Okay. Now, what happens in the reverse side? Uh, that the reverse side is that DLAUS, the, the null hypothesis DLAUS does not Granger cause DLDGI. We cannot reject the null hypothesis. And indeed, based on this one here, what we can argue is that there is a, the, the causality in the, in the Granger cause. In the longer in the longer um, mean is basically that indeed the LDGI causes the Laos. So America causes Australia, but Australia index does not cause does not have an influence on uh, the American index. And this makes this makes sense. Okay. Another way of seeing this one here is that you see the you go again to the correlation and take a look to the cross correlations. Let's do 36, that's okay. And take a look to how to read the cross correlations. Here we go. What we are saying is that this is DLAUS responding to the previous observation of a DLDGI. Okay, so what happens in USA yesterday influencing what happens today in Australia. And this one here is the opposite. This is what happens yesterday in Australia influencing what happens today in America. Uh, I, when I say America, I'm talking about the Dow Jones industry, okay, in this example. Well, it is clear, hi, guys, here that when that Australia is influenced, but what happens one period before in America? This is the one here. And there is no more influence after that. And what is interesting also is that Australia does has, has not an, uh, a significant influence, has no influence, basically, in what happens in, in, in USA. And that's what this model is telling you. And this model and this cross correlation, guys, basically tells you uh, the same story as a, as a granular causality. 
And granular causality is also, guys, based on lags. Okay, so it's basically the past uh, trying to explain the, the present. That's the granular causality. It's kind of correlation. It's not really causality in, in a proper sense, but it's more in, in understood as a, the past of a variable having certain effect on the present of another variable. This is a, the, the, the granular causality idea. Okay, so why this is important? Because this gives us an idea of what, how to put, the, how to organize our data in the, um, in the model here, you see? So indeed you put the first one here, if, if there's as clear as this one here, the first variable that you need to introduce is the, is the one that has an influence on the other one. So in this case, USA DGI. And the second variable is going to be the Australian in, in our case. So when we run this uh, VAR model, so this VAR model is correctly specified. What we will do now, guys, is something that, how do we use this? Um, that the problem with VAR models, uh, you know, is very hard to, to interpret the individual coefficients. Now, and one way of interpreting and understanding the results is with something that is called impulse responses. So let's do this. So what is the, the impulse response? Let's make it. Here we go. What is the impulse response, guys? So let me save this one here and let open another new file. So let's talk a little about impulse responses. Okay, so the, the basic idea, guys, let, let me write a very simple example. So let's assume that I have in, in general, okay, I have yt equals at. So this is my vector of coefficients, yt minus one plus my mu t, okay? And, and what we are going to assume now is uh, let's assume a bivariate, uh, let's assume a bivariate. So what I mean by this graph, let's assume a bivariate a var, let's say var one model, okay? So if I var var one model implies simply this is one t by two t is going to be equal to uh, alpha one zero, alpha two zero plus beta one one, beta one two, beta two one, beta two two that multiplies y one t minus one and y two t minus one, okay, plus my errors. So let's assume guys for, for, for now, let's assume that alpha one zero and alpha two zero are zero. So just to, to make it easier. And let's assume, assume also, so this is what I call my A matrix, okay? In, in the previous, this one here, this is my A. So let's assume also that my A matrix has uh, the following composition. It has a 0 0.5, 0 0.3, let's assume zero and 0 0.2. So let's assume this, this composition. So basically what I'm telling to you is that my model, when you run your model, your model is this one here, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0, 0 0.2, that multiplies y1 t minus one and y2 t minus one, eh, plus my error. Okay, so this is this is what we have. So what is the impulse response? The impulse response is simply you shock one variable and you keep constants and keep constant the other one. The others. Okay, uh, and and the shock guys is a, a unit shock. What is called a unit shock. So what is a unit shock? Okay, let's assume for, for now, let's assume that at time a zero, there is a shock equal to one and the variable time two at zero is going to be, okay, it's going to be zero. So there is nothing happening here, okay? So this implies the following. Uh, I will have, um, what happens then at y one, one? What happens at y two, one, period one? This is going to be equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, I'm sorry. Uh, this part disappears because the only thing that happens is a shock. Let me delete this part here. The only thing that happens is my shock at time zero. So this is going to be equal to one and zero. So this is my, 
my starting point, this is a point zero. Uh, we're, this is my value when the shock happens. So it's one and zero. So it was a shock of a unit shock. And now what we want to do is basically analyze what happens at time t, t1, t2, t3, et cetera. Okay. So now let's do y1, 1, 1, y2, 1 is going to be basically equal to 0 0.05, 0 0.3, 0, 0 0.2 that multiplies y10, y20, right? This is t minus one, t minus one. If it's t is one, t minus one is zero. And there is no more error here. And, and you know that this variable here is equivalent. So this is what we have estimated in the shock. This is what was shocked. This is equal to one zero. So if you do the, the, the math here, guys, okay, so let me, I was doing this in the morning. So this is going to be equal to, yeah, it's going to be equal to 0 0.5 plus zero, you agree? This is the first value. The second value is um, the second value is going to be this. The second value is going to be zero point five times one. Zero point three times zero is going to be zero. Uh, zero times zero. This one is zero, and and this one here. Wait. Okay. So uh, error here. What I'm doing, we need to do a multiplication. So let's let's redo this part here. One second. So remember that this is a two, a two times two. This is a two times one. So the result is going to be a two times one matrix. So it will have something that is a two times one. So it's 0 0.5 times one plus 0 0.3 times zero. So the result here is 0 0.5. And the lower part is going to be zero times one and 0 0.2 times one. So this is going to be 0, 0.0. So this is your y1 and y2, okay? And, and why I have a zero here? Well, this is obviously because I have, uh, uh, the variable number one does not influence the, the variable number one, number two, right? So that's why you have a zero. If this number here is, is a different number, different from zero, so you, you should have seen a different different result, okay? So then I do the, the following. So I do y1 at period two, and then with this, I will stop uh, at two. Then this is going to be the same as 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0, 0 0.2. That multiplies now y1, y2, 1. So this implies that we have 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0, 0 0.2. That multiplies these numbers now, 0 0.5 and 0. So if you do the math here, you are going to get 0 0.25 and 0. And then you, you see, you know, there was when there was a, the, the initial shock, you have something like that. So there was the initial shock, you, you jump to 1, OK? And then you jump to 0 0.5 after after one period, and then you go to 0 0.25, and I imagine this is going to go going back to the to the mean. Right? So this is an impulse response of a, when there is a shock in variable number one. So what happens now when we have a shock? So now the, the shock in variable number the shock in variable number one is going to be zero, and the shock in variable number two is the one that is going to be one. Okay, so if we do that and doing something similar, doing exactly something similar. Uh, so now we are going to have y10, y20. So in this case, this is going to be zero and one. And then we do the same, y11, y21. is going to be equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0, 0 0.2. And of this variable here, I will do this directly of zero and one. So what happens here? I have this is going to be zero point three. This goes down and zero point two. Correct. Uh, what happens in the next period? Y Y two two. This is going to be zero point five, zero point three, zero zero point two. That multiplies. 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So if we do this, okay, so let me do this by using the calculator. So this is going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.2. So we get 0 0.21. And 
And in the other one is zero times this, zero times this is 0 0.04. And, and, here, and here you see that the, the impact. Okay, now why I have values in here and in here, this one here represents uh, the, the, value, uh, the value of y1 at period one. And this one here represents the value of y1 at period two. So you can see now that, that y2, the variable y2, the past of variable y2 has an influence on the present of the variable y1. And, and this is true because I have this 0 0.3 here. Okay, make sense? Okay, perfect. So this is what we are going to do now in uh, using eViews, and I will show you how how easy this works. So let's go back to eViews, and again, uh, I assume that you have already selected uh, the best model, your best model. Once you do your your best model, and so I will use this one here. So this one here, I just just to be sure, I will do this again, the best model. And then what I will do is uh, you simply go to impulse. Okay, so the order here is what matters. Now let's do a horizon of let's say 20 days. And so let's let's run this one. Okay, let me make this big. So take a look, guys. This is an impact of oneself. This is my autocorrelation, basically. So I have a very big impact, and then I, I simply decrease very quickly when there is a shock goes up and that very quickly goes back to the mean. Take a look at the, uh, and the same happens with the laws, the laws. But what is interesting guys is if you see the, these elements here outside the main diagonal, this one here is the response of the LDGI to the changes on the laws. Okay, so what happens when the laws changes? Nothing. America don't even realize that there was something. It's very, very small. However, guys, when, Something happens in America. When I say America, guys, I'm talking about the Dow Jones Industrials, okay? If something happens with the Dow Jones Industrials, uh, Australia reacts, you know, goes to 0 0.4, but the effect also lasts almost nothing. Lasts one period, and then after one period, you are back to, to normal. So these are the, the famous impulse responses that, uh, that we should know. And, and this is one way of using the, the bar models, okay? Now, let me go back again to my, uh, to my estimate here. And what we are going to do now, guys, as usual, is we, we can use this one for forecasting, okay? Uh, the name, uh, we can call it F, and let's forecast only the, the last six days, okay? From 245, well, this is the last seven days, actually. And, and 251, let's call it F. Let's do an static forecast. You know the difference between dynamic and static. And, and let's, res let's run this one here. Okay, so let me let me show you this part here. Uh, yeah, this is not very informative. So let's let's go let's go and, and create. So what what I've created is this variable here. Okay, so I created D laos F. This is a forecast of D laos, and should I I should have D D L D F with an F at the end. The L, oh, here we are. We have, we have created this one here also. Now, if I want to see how well my forecast was, remember guys, when we did the bar model that the forecast was kind of flat, nothing worked. So let's take a look now to, if we have improved something for d -Laus. Okay, so d -Laus F and d -Laus is, d -Laus is my real data and d -Laus F is my forecast value. So let's open as a group. Let's do a graph. And the regular line graph, that's okay. Well, we don't see anything because we, what we want is simply to see the last part. So what you do is you do sample, and then you select 245 space 251. That is uh, the period of the forecast. And just take a look to what happens. So now you can see, guys, that the, the forecast is completely different. You know, it, it is much better. I've done a forecast somewhere uh, the, the Laos, AR, so I've done the forecast, I think, with this one here. I don't know, let me see. Mm. Let me see. Laos F, I think this is the one. Yes, this is the one. So now we need to Laos, 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 this one here. So this one here, guys, is with an, an AR1. Is correct. 
This is layers, 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 yes. So you can see that there is a lag here. So the, the real one is uh, the blue and the forecasted one is the orange. And you can see that the orange, yeah, it doesn't look very nice. It, it appears that it's lagged one period. But then if you see the, the forecasted values using the, the VAR model, basically with the with influence of the American one that, produce, that introduces more information into the, into the Laos variable. So the, the, the forecast is much better than before. Okay, so this is it for um, for VAR models. What we what is left now is to to introduce a, a new type of type of models. Remember that uh, VAR models, ARMA type models that we have been studying up to now, they they necessarily need the stationarity condition. Okay, so all the series that are present in the series and in, in the model must be stationary. Otherwise, the model is, is meaningless. So what is next is basically, okay, now what I want to work with non-stationary series. And I, I want to use also the information of non-stationarity in my models. Okay, so this is what is going to come uh, in the next video and, in, and we're going to develop in greater detail during the class. Okay, guys, uh, this is it for now. I will upload this video soon. Thank you very much and talk soon.